Today on Chinivision, we're off to a trip to Mars. Total Recall was Ocean's big 1990 Christmas hit on the Amstrad Spectrum, Commodore 64 ST and Amiga, uh, an adaption of the big movie of the same name starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, beloved by schoolboys everywhere for a scene I, I won't recount now. The game had a troubled development history. It was being developed by a company called Active Minds, who Ocean had subcontracted out to. Um, it became apparent to Ocean that the game was massively behind and simply would not be ready for Christmas 1990. So they took back the development in-house and put their own team on the game and started again from scratch. You often read the game took two weeks to code, but I've been speaking to Mark Jones Jr. on Twitter, and he says he was contracted to Ocean for the game for something between five and eight weeks and he's even got his original letters from Ocean regarding his pay for the project because he was no longer an Ocean staff member and he was brought back on board and looking at the cracking dates as well I think the ST Amiga and C64 may have just made the shops for Christmas 1990 and the Amstrad CPC and Spectrum must have come out sometime in January 1991. There are videos of that unfinished version available on YouTube, but we're not going to look at that today because that's not the version you could buy in the shops. We're going to start off on the Atari ST version, and yet we're starting off on a CRT, an Acorn CRT, or a Philips CRT, if truth be known. And we start off with an introduction about the movie. Quaid's a hard-working construction worker, and there's the Red Planet, a giant pyramid mountain, and the mysterious uh, beautiful woman. And that's about his dreams, of course. And then you get this weird graphic. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger himself doesn't appear in these graphics because apparently Ocean didn't have the rights to use his image in anything other than the title screen. So you get this kind of slightly strange um, uh, character on the screen there. But you do get Arnie on this wonderful title screen that's replicated across, I think, most of the versions. And that always looks better on CRT. And uh, last time I did CRT stuff, people said, why don't you record it from the speaker as well? So I'm, I'm doing that this time to see how that works out. It might be quite um, noisy. And you can see the blockbuster movie available on video January 21st, 1991. Um, Ocean getting the game out before the movie was available on tape. But of course, it had already been out on the cinema for quite a while. And again, this is a Pompey Pirates crack. I don't know how you'd tell that. I mean, absolutely no idea to tell how this has been cracked by the Pompey Pirates. But yeah, that looks nothing like Arnie, does it? Nothing at all. And sadly, none of those kind of grabs that you got in Ghostbusters 2 from the movie itself, which would be lovely um, in something like this. But no, um, we don't have the rights to use Arnie's image, so we've got these strange, almost but not quite Arnie images. Running along with a gun, and um, we pick up a gun, and lots of baddies run after you. There are lifts, and yet it's a fairly standard platform. We've got to find four objects, including your um, passport that allows you to travel to Mars, um, and some other bits and pieces as well. And there's also a watch you can pick up that shows you where these items roughly are located, in a similar style to um, the Untouchables, where it points to where the next baddie you need to shoot is. You've only got a limited amount of bullets, which is quite frustrating. And there's a lot of going up and down on rather slow lifts. And the ST version doesn't also scroll smoothly. It jumps when you get to the edge of the screen, a bit like some Amstrad games do. Not sure why. Again, possibly if this version was knocked together very quickly, uh, that might be a reason for that. But I'm, I'm not sure. Let's try the Amiga version, and we're running direct capture this time. So the intro looks very, very similar. It's the same.
Total Recall is one of those movies that did really well on a home video, and of course the home video wouldn't have been out when this game was first released, and that's looking even nicer on the Amiga. And yeah, it, it's strange, isn't it? They allow Arnie on that, but nowhere else. Same introduction, we we'll skip that. And off we go into the game. And essentially, when it started, it looks very similar to the ST version. A little bit brighter, because of course this is direct capture rather than CRT. Um, it scrolls properly though. Now this getting to the side and jumping, it does scroll properly. And I'm completely unsure why the ST version does the scrolling thing. You've got these baddies here who take several hits to kill, and they will usually drop a power up. You've got a little stand of men who run around who can kill with a couple of blows, um, but the bigger guys, yeah, they need bullets, and they need a couple of them as well. To run along here, we should be able to find the watch that lets us find the objects we need. So now we've got an arrow, top right hand corner, telling us go top right. But of course, it's not as simple as that because these lifts won't necessarily take you where you want to go. So you end up walking around this massive play area, trying to find your way. And it's, it's not very linear, like um, Navy Seals, for example, where there's usually a pretty linear way through the levels, even if you can take one or two different routes. Um, it's pretty linear. On Total Recall, it's pretty messy pretty quickly. And back to the ST, and again on direct capture now, rather than CRT. And that lack of scrolling on the ST really spoils things. It just lacks the fluidity when you get to the edge of the screen. It's that like pause and it scrolls. It's horrible. This is a level end of level one on the Amiga. This is a horrible game. I'm using a cheat now, by the way. It's impossibly difficult. Um, you've got so few bullets. Um, it's really hard to complete it. And I've just kind of given up on the ST. And on the Amiga, I've got a cheat, and it's still really hard. I mean, when a game's got a cheat on it, and it's still impossibly hard. Not quite impossibly hard. You know you're in trouble. On to level two with no cheat because I couldn't get it to work. And you race along and you have to get to the end of the level in time. It's a really horrible uh, level two here. Um, just terrible, terribly implemented. No fun at all. Fiddly. Horrible. Um, I think the graphics in this level with, and probably more versions of this besides are drawn by Mark Jones junior because he has some uh, documents that relate to this level the graphics look fine enough but the gameplay is extremely simplistic um it's also an incredibly long level here on the st um it goes on for five minutes five minutes and it's incredibly tough so over to the commodore 64 and same plot you have to collect all your, your passport and all the other items and there's lifts and things. It's, it's different level layout on the C64. The jumping is really odd. You can't jump upwards, but if you, depending on which way you're facing, when you press up, you jump in that direction. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. And also, you bounce, if you as much as misjudge a jump by much as one pixel, you bounce back horrifically. Very atmospheric SID soundtrack, not nothing spectacular, but it's very atmospheric. You can break open uh, boxes for oxygen and things, and that's the telephone box that should be the end of the level. Pick up that oxygen. Oh, it's oxygen, it's the briefcase. So I've got the briefcase, and into the telephone box we go. And that's not particularly obvious where it is as well. Quaid succeeds in eluding Victor and his cohorts. We won't go to level 2 on the C64 yet, let's go over to the Spectrum and we're back on CRT. On a plus 2. And if you cheat on this version, the title screen changes to Total Rewrite. Because that's the nickname the coders gave the game. Um, and the problem was well known around Manchester at the time, apparently. Uh, Steve Pick Pickford has uh, recounted... Uh, the word getting around the Manchester coding scene that Total Recall was a complete disaster. Loading screen looks nice, we just saw that there on the Spectrum as well. 
little bit blocky, but to be expected with the tribute issues. And the Spectrum and the Amstrad versions as well have these fantastic tunes by Jonathan Dunn. Really, really nice. Get a little introduction there, Quaid, after visiting Recall and so on, much quicker. Big junky graphics. Um, looks a bit like Eamon Holmes or perhaps Paul Ross. Yeah, Paul Ross. It looks like Paul Ross running along here. And on this version, what you have to do is activate the switches and that allows you to jump between... Um, there you go. If I activate that switch there, let's avoid that electrocution thing there. And we should now be able to jump over to the side there. And we'll just crack on with the Amstrad version while we're at it. Beautiful loading screen. Looks fantastic on CRT. This isn't CRT. But I can tell you on a CTM644, this looks stunning with all those blues and purples from the CPC's palette. And apparently by the time this version came out, the blockbuster movie was available on video now. So let, we can assume perhaps the Amstrad version did miss Christmas. I bought this March 1991 in my local WH Smiths. Um, so certainly it was on the shelves then. So you're probably expecting a complete total Spectrum port. And look at this menu screen, yep, Total Recall, exactly the same stuff as the Spectrum version. This does not look good. Has the same fantastic tune though. I think it's one of Jonathan Dunn's best ones. Why he didn't do the 16-bit versions, I don't know. Here we go. The sprites are very similar and probably share some assets with the Spectrum version, but it's Mode Nought on the Amstrad. Nice and chunky. Look at all that colour in the background. Jump over there. Flick that switch there. Jump back. Got to be careful not to flick switches again when you jump over them. Time it right. Jump now. Oh, late, late. Oh! And up the lift. Right. I've time this very carefully. That's right. Oh. Now he's got oh he's got bullets and they can bend down as well. Although Oh I hit him there, although I lost a lot of energy doing that. Those guys there just punch. They're fairly easy to dispatch. Some extra points there. Go down here to the right. Bit of a memory test for me for a game I haven't played for many years. Over to the Spectrum version, back on direct capture rather than CRT, and further into level one. These lovely chunky graphics, they work really well. It's got to position itself correctly, and it's nice kind of not 3D, but it's depth. You look at those lifts, and they've coloured them, even on the Spectrum's limited palette, uh, to give it depth. Level 2 on the C64, and it's a, it's a top-down, not a racer, but uh, you race around the city and got to get to the location um, at the other side of the city and collect all the objects as well. Controls are simply diabolical. I just... It's... And, and one thing to be said about Total Recall is you get one life and that's it. There's no second goes. You get some energy... And once the energy's gone, that's it, you're dead. And th there's in some of the versions, there's no credits either. I'm going to pick up there. It's crawling along because the controls are so abysmally awful. See, I know it's not supposed to be a car, it's supposed to be this futuristic hover thing. But there's no excuse for having such dreadful controls. And really dodgy collision as well. Oh, trying to pick that up. Really difficult. Around the corner there and go back there. Oh! Okay. Let's go around this corner. And you see about the collision? When I was saying about the collision, I'm miles away from the edge and I can't go forward. This is absolute tosh. And I don't know where I'm going. I've got a map with flashing things on it. I've got to collect all the objects. Have I just driven past an object? I'm not sure, because the map doesn't work very well. It's rubbish. On the Spectrum, it's a similar affair to the Amiga. A 
And yes, I've completed level two and I'm now cheating because the game name has changed to Total Rewrite. Level three on the ST and you're running around in this factory and it's very like level one. Again, it's fiddly hard. You have to try and work your way through the level. At least it doesn't have so many death drops as the level one does on the ST and Amiga. Quite a few times you think you need to jump off the screen on level one and you end up falling right off the map and dying. Um, I, I'm using a cheat here as well and have been since level two because this is, this is really, really hard. And unlike the C64 version which has arrows to point you through the maps, nothing like that here on the 16-bit versions. And while we're watching the ST version here, Chini Vision is available on Patreon. Just a dollar a month gets you access to bonus videos and previews and all sorts of things and help support the channel and buy things uh, for the channel such as hardware and things to review. And this is the end of level two on the Amstrad. Nice big chunky graphics, looks like a budget game, but never mind. We've now arrived at the derelict warehouse. So it's an ocean game, so it's gonna repeat level one. And yes, indeed it does. Don't fall down the gaps, because if you fall down the gaps, you are dead and you're back to the start. And I nearly did there. And yeah, if you, even if you cheat on the game, um, yeah, you're dead, basically. Because all the cheats give you infinite energy, but they don't give you falling off, yeah, protection against falling off the screen. A little tricky bit here to do. I'll time this exactly right, because it's a bit baddie at the end there. Ooh. Jump up there. And level four on the Amstrad. And it's repeated level two with different graphics. It, it, it's like a budget game, really, this level. It's not, it's not bad, well. <sighs> I, I don't know, it's all rushed, isn't it, really? Would Ocean have ordinarily put out something like this? The enemy patterns are incredibly repetitive on the Spectrum and Amstrad. They always do the same thing. Some of them go diagonally and then they come back and do the same thing backwards. You can tell this is a game that's really been rushed. And on to level five. So we're now got to go, we're now in the caverns of Mars and this is the final level. And look how wonderful these graphics look on the spectrum again. All this red and girls and things flashing in the background. You fall into these pools that lose you energy. And the animated big fans in the background. The animated backgrounds, yeah, there's a few frames of animation there, it looks really nice. Will we get it animated on the Amstrad? Lovely depth again here on the Amstrad version. I'm assuming the C64 would have a similar setup. Again, I can't get too far on that version, I'm afraid. Level 5 on the ST and now running around on Mars. I'm um, with Melina, no, not that one. Um, and you can swap between characters. Again, it's lots of lifts. It's the same thing as levels one and three, just with slightly different modified graphics. And again, very easy to get lost. A lot of baddies that need multiple hits when you've got limited bullets to kill. Um, not so many general grunts running after you as level one, where you get all those people emerging from the doors. It tends to be the main guard characters who fire bullets at you and it takes three hits to kill them every time. Always on the ST and Amiga, the bullets uh, start to fall out the sky the further away they get, which is quite irritating because you're trying to kneel down and aim and suddenly realise the bullets are coming down and hitting your head. It, it seems like a nice effect, but it slightly ruins the gameplay again. Has the feel of a game that just needs a bit more playtesting, but they didn't have time. There's lots of nice ideas here, but I think some of these things would have been ironed out in playtesting. They simply did not have enough time to sort out. So that's a journey through the five versions of Total Recall. My highlight is the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. Yeah, there's not a lot of depth in the game, but I do like those platform levels. They're graphically wonderful, even if there's not a huge amount of depth to the gameplay and the levels that link them with the driving are pretty weak. C64 version, it's very atmospheric, but it's incredibly hard and has a horrible jumping mechanic. Um, up to jump in the direction you are facing 
um, and then you bounce off any objects that you're too close to. Just very annoying. Also, the game's very hard, even with a cheat. As you'll notice, I didn't get past level two, and that wasn't for the want of trying, but at some point, you just have to give up. ST and Amiga versions, well, like the C64 version, they're very atmospheric. However, you're wandering around these very large levels, often with no guidance to go, at least on the Spectrum, Amstrad and Commodore versions, you've generally got a pretty good idea of where you're going. And the C64 version even has arrows to point stuff out to you. ST and Amiga, no, and there's a lot of death drops as well. Sometimes you're required to jump down, and that's fine. Other times you jump down, there's nothing there, you fall off the bottom of the level, you're dead. Baddies are also incredibly stupid because they can't follow you onto platforms, although you can use that as a technique to get away from them. Overall, the things that strike you about the C64, Amiga and ST versions are these are three versions of the game that really needed more playtesting and more feedback just to improve them. And for me, the Spectrum and Amstrad versions just stand slightly above those other versions because they just feel a little bit more complete. Would I buy Total Recall for a dollar? Well, certainly, on the Spectrum and Amstrad, I would. <laughs>